So let's talk about the original Teen Wolf with Michael J. Fox, which celebrated its 35th anniversary just a couple of months ago. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to you as the Big D. And this time around, I bring to you a review of the 1985 coming-of-age rom-com fantasy flick, Teen Wolf. Released by Atlantic Releasing Corporation, directed by Rod Daniel. Sorry, Michael J. Fox, who of course was already big, playing Alex P. Keaton on TV's Family Ties. And then just recently, before this, that same year appeared as Marty McFly in Back to the Future. Now, he plays as the title character, who, of course, real name is Scott Howard. A high school student whose ordinary life is changed when he discovers that he's a werewolf. Yes. So... Anyway, let's get started with our story. Scott Howard is a 17-year-old high school student who is sick of being average. Living in a small town in Nebraska, his only claim to popularity is playing on the Beavers, his school's basketball team, which is very unsuccessful, and following after his crush, Pamela Wells, who is dating his rival, Mick. Mick plays for the Dragons, an opposing team who tends to bully Scott on the court. Completely oblivious to his best friend Booth's affections, he constantly rebuffs her advances due to their history together. After a series of startling changes such as long hair suddenly sprouting, hands suddenly getting hairy, he decides to quit the team, but his coach, Finstock, changes his mind. Scoring a keg with his friend Styles for a party, Scott and Booth end up alone in a closet and Scott gets rough when they begin making out, accidentally clawing Booth's back. When he returns home, he undergoes a strange transformation and discovers he's a werewolf. His father, Harold, confronts him and reveals he too is a werewolf and that he had hoped Scott would not inherit this, this here curse because sometimes it skips a generation. Scott reveals his secret to Styles, who agrees to keep it a secret, but when Scott becomes stressed on the court at their next basketball game, he becomes the wolf and helps win their first game in three years. This has an unexpected result of fame and popularity as the high school is overwhelmed with wolf fever, which quickly alienates Scott from Booth and from his teammates as he begins to hog the ball during games. Styles merchandises Teen Wolf paraphernalia and Pamela finally begins paying attention to Scott after he gets a role as a werewolf cavalryman in the school play alongside her. She comes on to him in the dressing room, and the two have a CX. Uh-oh. Later, after a date set up to make Mick jealous on purpose, Pamela tells Scott that she is still seeing Mick and is not interested in Scott as a boyfriend. Much to his disappointment, Harold tells Scott he is responsible for Vice Principal Rusty Thorne breathing down his neck due to a scare he had given him when he was in high school, and advises him to be himself and not the wolf. So, now I'm going to get to uh, close to the ending, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the ending. So, you have five seconds to stop this video, go to the description box below, and fast forward to the time below to avoid any, to avoid any spoilers. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Now, with the upcoming spring dance, Booth agrees to go with Scott, but only if he goes as himself and not the wolf. 
Scott goes alone as the wolf and has a great time. However, Booth is not impressed with this. She takes Scott out into the hallway and they kiss, which turns Scott back into himself. When they return to the dance, everyone pays attention to him, including Pamela. Mick gets upset, insults Booth, and taunts Scott until the wolf comes out and angrily attacks him. The crowd looks shocked at his change of character, and he runs out of the hall right into Thorn, who threatens to expel Scott from school. Harold appears and tells his son to go home, then tells Thorn to leave Scott alone. He intimidates Thorn by growling into his face, causing the vice principal to urinate himself. Oh boy. Scott renounces using the wolf, quitting the play and the basketball team who have come to expect it. During the championship game, Scott arrives and rallies his teammates to play without the wolf in order to win the game. Despite the odds, the team begins to play together and they make ground against the dragons. During the final quarter, behind by one point, Scott is fouled by Mick at the buzzer. He makes both shots, winning the game and the championship to everyone's delight. Brushing past Pamela, Scott kisses Booth as his father comes down and hugs the two of them. Mick tells Pamela that they should leave, but she tells him to drop dead and storms off while everyone else celebrates the victory. End of story. Wow. Okay, so now what did I think of Team Wolf? I'm going to say it's pretty good. Uh, it's been a long time since I last saw the movie. I've been wanting to revisit it, but I've been failing to. But hey, I have seen it before. Not too many times, but I have had some memories of it. I remember Scott dancing on top of, well, um, this, the car and what have you in this one scene in the wolf form. Yeah, that was a pretty good scene. I just gotta say, and Pamela hitting off with him, and, well, but, well, as they're trying to get ready for that play, yeah, that was another good moment. I'd say Team Wolf was just so good. Anyway, now our cast includes, of course, Michael J. Fox as Scott. Playing his dad, Harold, is James Hampton, who, of course, would later go on to work on two other Team Wolves, which I'll talk about that later. He's... Also best known for doing work on TV shows such as The Doris Day Show and F Troop, plus a lot of other shows. Playing in Booth, um, whose name is real name's Lisa, Lisa Marconi, is Susan Ursitti. Playing Styles, which is his name's actually Rupert Stolinski, is Jerry Levine. Let's see. Lori Griffin as Pamela, Jim McCrell as Vice Principal Thorne, and Mark Arnold as Mick. Yeah, a pretty good cast. The film actually did pretty well, uh, actually. We want to make a million on a 1.2 million budget. However, um, the response for this was mixed, though, but still it was pre, but was still successful. The film got released and opened in second place right, just right behind Back to the Future. And so the film grossed $33 million here in the U.S., but of course it made $80 million worldwide overall. It has been released. Released on DVD via MGM and a double feature along with its sequel, which would be released two years later, and having Jason Bateman in the role. And James Hampton actually returns as Harold. But however, I mentioned two team of things, because after the success of the movie, the following year, there would be a Team Wolf animated series on CBS, which be prepared because that's going to be this week's Saturday morning TV log. I'll be doing this Saturday morning, so be on the lookout for that. 
which I have fond memories of watching because that was one of my few favorite movie-based cartoons, and I absolutely loved the Teen Wolf cartoon. In 2011, there would be a supernatural drama version of this that aired on that more recently became a big hit for MTV unexpectedly in 2011, and it aired until 2017. But with a pretty good story, great cast and characters, Teen Wolf's real good. Would I recommend it? I'd say, hell yeah, this is something you gotta check out. So, look into Teen Wolf. I really don't, haven't done the sequel much. Maybe another time I'll give it a chance and maybe review in the future. But in the meantime, do look for my Saturday morning TV log of the Teen Wolf cartoon series this Saturday. So, what are your thoughts on Team Wolf? Please tell me in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well and be a part of the Big D Nation, which I am only 7 subscribers away from reaching 250, so thank you. And again, thanks for, well, making me feel better considering after that recent copyright claim, which, which again, it's cleared up, and rest assured, the volume will be down on my TV during my next live stream. Yes, you heard me correctly. I am going to go ahead and do my next live stream, but I will keep the volume down, so that way, nothing will go wrong, okay? I promise. But anyway, join me next time when I bring to you a review of Pet Cemetery 2. Also, be on the lookout for a special spoiler-free review coming up as well, which I'll have up tomorrow morning, and Pet Cemetery 2 will come up tomorrow night. Anyway, thank you for watching my review of Teen Wolf. If you like, and if you like these, you can check out some of these other fun-filled flicks. If you want some more Michael J. Fox, go to the upper left-hand corner for my playlist of the Back to the Future trilogy. And in the upper right-hand corner, if you want some real fun, you should check out my review of the original Fright Night, which happened to come out the same year this did, in 85. Or if you just want some real spectacular fun, go to my Go to the bottom left-hand corner for my recent review of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And the bottom right-hand corner is the, bu is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.